Welcome back to Chaos to Clarity. I'm meteorologist Bernie Reno. I haven't been with you since Milton, I believe. Uh, since then, we had Nadine and Oscar. All right, next week, I feel pretty strongly and we feel pretty strongly we're going to get development, tropical development uh, in the uh, Caribbean. Here's our map here. So this is going to be mid to late next week over the upcoming weekend anywhere in the Caribbean. By the way, this is where you would typically get development this time of the year. You always look closer to home and into the Caribbean for development. And we think there's a strong likelihood of at least a tropical depression or a named storm. And of course, named storms could be tropical storm or a hurricane. And I think both, all three possibilities are possible. Let me show you why. Um, I want to show you this pattern. Uh, I talk about this pattern a lot. I've seen this develop storms. In fact, if this looks familiar to you, that uh, what you we were looking at last week, you'd be correct. It's the same weather pattern. That is, you get a big area of high pressure. Now, this is for Tuesday. This is next, uh, this upcoming Tuesday, October 29th. What happens is you get this area of high pressure that builds across the Northeast, and you always look underneath the belly of the high for showers and thunderstorms to develop because this high is going to drag a cold front south where that front's going to stall here in the southern Gulf of Mexico or in the northern Caribbean. You're going to get a developing area of showers and thunderstorms. So that's the immediate. As soon as I see this pattern, I look into the Caribbean for development. By the way, this was the same pattern that produced Oscar and Nadine late last week and over the last weekend here. So, I mean, we saw that we've seen this pattern before. Now, what will be the determining factor on this is whether you have wind shear, strong winds in the middle and upper part of the atmosphere, because the other two ingredients, sufficient moisture and water temperature, you're not going to have any problems having those, especially the water temperatures here. Uh, let, let me show you the water temperatures. I'm going to go full so you can see it. I mean, these are the water temperatures right now, and these are the actual anomalies, I should say. So water temperatures this time of the year average about 82 or 83. Well, these anomalies are showing you that water temperatures are running a few degrees above the historical average. So water temperatures are plenty warm enough. The limiting factor of this, what the key is for development, is going to be the wind shear. If we have any strong winds in the middle and upper part of the atmosphere, if we don't have wind shear, we're going to have a hurricane in the Caribbean. If we do have wind shear, that's going to limit the development. And I, I, I don't, I, I still think even if there's some wind shear, there's going to be so many thunderstorms here in such warm water that at least the depression would form and some kind of entity would then begin to form in the Caribbean. That's why we think there's a high risk for development. But we'll be the, what will be the deciding factor is the wind shear, whether there's strong winds aloft. I want to show you this. We're going to take a look at the wind shear product I look at, 200 millibar high in the atmosphere. And what we're looking for are light winds aloft. I'll take this full. So what you're looking at here, there's two models we're going to look at. The European, which is the ECMWF, and then also the American model. That is called the GFS. Uh, that's the American model. Now, the time frame we're looking at is the middle part of next week. I want to show you and we're going to look at this product so you can see some of the things I look at. So this is uh, the wind shear product. This is 2 o'clock. This is 8 o'clock Tuesday. This is the GFS model in here. And you'll notice we think development's going to be in, development's going to be in here. There's still some strong winds in here, but you're starting to see an area of high pressure to develop here. This is the American model. This is the European model for the same time frame. So European... GFS, European GFS. Not all that different, although the, the GFS, little stronger in here with this little jet streak. So you have a little bit more in the way of wind shear. But you can see, even on the European here, you have very light winds here aloft in the South uh, Western Caribbean. Same story with the American model. You have light winds in here, so they're similar. Now let's go forward here in the two Wednesday evening. This is where we start to get a little difference here. This is the Europe, this is the American model, this is the GFS. You'll notice this. Uh, uh, American, European, American, European. The one thing you can see is that the American model is beginning to lift this energy northward. So you're starting to get less wind shear. You still have some. You can see the winds here about 25 knots out of the west-southwest, but you'll note that the European is much stronger. Watch this area in here. 
I'll keep it circled right in there. Watch that. Watch how the winds are stronger there. You see that? Much stronger wind shear. And this is Wednesday night. American, European. American, European. You see how there's much stronger winds here? So if, if that's right, nothing develops here yet on Wednesday. But if the American model is right with this, you're going to start getting some development here. Let's go to Thursday evening, and you can see the bigger differences. Here's the American model. Again, we're looking for light winds. You have this upper low in here. You can see the cotton clockwise spins. A lot less wind shear here in the Caribbean. Meanwhile, that's the American model. What does the European model have? A lot stronger winds. Look at the difference. Thursday American. European, American, European. Look at the blue south of Hispaniola. See, if, if the European's right, and if this piece of energy does not lift out, you're not getting any development here on Thursday. Now, the American model, to me, looks like you're going to start getting development in here. You have low wind shear in here, but the European keeps things a little on the windy side here. As we go forward, though, even on the European, you'll see that by the time we get into the weekend, you're starting, see, you're starting to lower the wind shear in here. So the European tells me there's lower wind shear here, but it's not until Saturday or Sunday. So that's when the development would be. But if the American model's right, and this, this jet lifts a little farther north earlier, then you have less wind shear in here by Friday and Saturday. Here's the American model Friday evening. You see, you have low wind shear in here. And that's where the de system develops. Now, the reason I keep talking about that is that that's the key. If the wind shear lessens, you're going to get a tropical system in there, at least a depression or a storm, and it could be a hurricane. Now, all modeling is showing that wind shear at some points lessen. The Europeans a little later, won't be until Sunday, Monday. The American model looks more like Friday, Saturday. So that makes a big difference, okay, because... Whether it forms early, let's say late in the week, or let's say over the upcoming weekend, next weekend, into the following week. And then we're talking about uh, the week of the election day it will be the day before election day, um, the, the 4th of November. So that's what we're looking at now. But I, all modeling to me shows lowering wind shear. And that's why I'm so confident that we're going to get development. Now, the question is, is where is it going? Everybody wants to know that. I want to show you. I want to show you a scenario graph, graphic that I that I drew here, and I, I, I and the reason being here is I want to let me go back a second here and show you the weather pattern um, across the the country here as we get over the weekend. See, here's the here's the key here. Um, let me see if you could see this. So let me see if I want to show this, or I'll confuse everybody here. But I'll tell you this. Here, here's what I'm just going to show you the scenario graphic here, right? and and this is what I think the likely scenarios are with this. All right, let me take this full, and uh, let me close this up here a second so you can see the scenario graphic. So here's the scenarios. I think this system I think is going to form somewhere near Jamaica, maybe a little farther west. Now, if it waits until late next weekend or even the following week, what you're going to end up seeing is. By the time we get into that time frame, which would be somewhere around November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, you're going to see a high-pressure area build here across Florida, and that would force this system into probably Central America or the Yucatan Peninsula, somewhere in here. All right, and it would more likely be a weaker system, but it would be at least a tropical depression or a name, or even a or a tropical storm, and it would be heading toward Central America, even um, uh, Yucatan Peninsula. But if this development happens earlier, let's say by Thursday or Friday, you have a trough coming in here at that time across the central U.S., and I think that would draw that northward. Now, is the development here or over here? It could be something like this. But any in any event, if you get this development by midweek or even late week, and maybe that's too soon, then there's a window for this system to come northward. And if it comes northward, then you have to worry about Florida and the southeast coast for some possible impacts here. So, you know, th th that's my message here, that if you live in Florida and you live along the southeast coast of the United States, you have to keep an eye on this. What I don't believe 
is what the what the American model was showing just 24 hours ago, and I didn't believe it, that you had a system coming in the Eastern Gulf. I don't believe that. Uh, history tells me these systems either go this way or more likely go northward. And they tend to go northward because you get these troughs coming in across the country. And we're going to see a series of troughs next week coming in the United States. So that's what I mean, is that I, I, I feel pretty strongly that th this is not a Gulf storm. This is a Caribbean storm or an Atlantic system. And if it goes into the Atlantic, I, I think it heads northward. Now, we'll see where this develops. Uh, but I do think the later this waits to develop, the more likely this stays away from the United States and heads towards Central America. If it forms before the weekend, then I think there's a window that would take this somewhere across Hispaniola and Cuba. And at some point, Early next, the following week, which would be the 4th and 5th of November, it starts moving at least for a time toward the United States. Would it make a landfall? I don't know. Not ready to say that. But I am ready to say if you live in the southeast, you know, the Carolina coast and, and, and Florida, you, uh, you've got to keep an eye on this. I even extended it northward toward Fort Myers uh, to be on the safe side in case I'm wrong and it would try to clip into South Florida. But th those are the areas to watch with this. And, you know, I again, the later this takes to form, the more likely there's no impacts on the United States. But you have to keep an eye on these systems. These systems that form in the Caribbean oftentimes are drawn northward and can get very close to the east coast of the United States. So we're very early in the ballgame. And for those that are looking at the models, good luck. I, I, I really don't think they're going to have a good, uh, good idea about this yet. Um, I'm concentrating on shear. And as long as I see the wind shear lessen, I'm going to continue to say there's development here. And then here are the two different scenarios. I think that's the way to handle this for now. So I would not be looking for any U.S. impacts here until the week of the election. I don't think it's anything before that. So that's something to keep an eye on. So let's watch this area. Uh, we feel pretty confident there's at least going to be a tropical depression or a name storm. These are This is kind of what I'm going with for now as far as the scenarios. Uh, climatology favors this northward track in the southwest Atlantic. But again, I, I, I could see how high pressure starts to build here on the week of uh, uh, of election week, the 4th and 5th. And that's why if it doesn't, if it's not out of the Caribbean by that week, then I think it would more likely move toward uh, Central America. If it forms late in the week, late next week, then you have a system moving in here. And that's where it could get a little dicey for Florida and the East Coast. So let's see how it works out. Now, if you have any questions or comments, you can uh, follow me on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm at Accurano. I hope you have a, uh, a great weekend.